Double-tonguing! So many people's worst nightmare. Also triple-tonguing. All right, friends, today I'm gonna to teach you a couple secrets of mine on how to master double and triple tonguing. So by the end of this video, you should never have another question about how to effectively practice double and triple tonguing ever again. In exchange for these free gems of wisdom, all I ask is that you give this video a quick thumbs up so that other people can find this video. And also please subscribe to the channel with notifications on so it'll help my low self-esteem. Just kidding, it's actually because I post a new video every single week and you won't want to miss out on your weekly dose of trumpet silliness. I also have a free trumpet sound guide and it's completely free so you know why not? Link in the description. And if you watch this video all the way to the very end, I'm going to tell you a joke that's so not funny that it's guaranteed to make you laugh. But don't skip or I'm going to steal that slice of cake that you're saving in the fridge. So if you clicked on this video, my guess is that you're looking for some ideas on how to improve your double and triple tonguing. And I get it, it's hard, and I get that it might feel like one of the hardest things ever to learn on the trumpet. But the good news is that I have a secret for mastering double and triple tonguing. And if you follow the secret, this little method that I'm going to show you, you're going to be a master. But before I tell you what this secret is, let me tell you about a little piece of malarkey that you might be spreading around. Whoa! Matt's gonna disagree with something that I was previously taught? How dare he? Oh, don't worry, it's okay. There's so many different solutions to everything in the world, and just because one school of thought is mainstream doesn't mean that it's necessarily correct. Well, it's too late. I'm already offended. Okay, that's fair. Dislike. So anyway, there was something that I was taught during some point in my development, and you may have been taught the same thing too, is that there's a speed where double-tonguing is easy and single-tonguing is hard. And then there's a speed where single tonguing is easy, but double tonguing is hard. And then there's this gray area in the middle where both single tonguing and double tonguing feel really weird and awkward, right? Have you ever heard something like this? Drop a comment down below if you have. I want to know what you heard. Well, I don't believe that this is true. What? Just like, whoa, 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 hang on. Let me rephrase. It's probably true for most trumpet players who have issues with articulation, but there's actually a magical way to fix this if you're having this sort of problem. In order to truly master double and triple tonguing, you need to be able to do it at any speed, at any tempo. Let me tell you a little story now. Double and triple tonguing, ah! I used to totally suck at it. It was my Achilles heel. It was my worst nightmare of trumpet playing. I used to be awful at it. So how'd I get over this major roadblock of mine? Well, let me tell you what happened. So during my semester breaks from university, I studied over the summer with another trumpet player because I wanted to just keep my lessons going. So during summer breaks, I kept studying. So I went to this teacher of mine and I told him that I was having issues with double and triple tonguing and I really needed to get better at it. So here's what he did. He set a metronome to 40 beats per minute. 40 beats per minute is super slow. Just to remind you, this is 40 beats per minute. So my thoughts were, okay, quarter note equals 40 beats per minute. That's not too bad. That's not too slow, but you have no idea how wrong I was. So the metronome was 40 beats, not per quarter note, per 16th note. I kid you not. It's super, super slow. And he wanted me to double tongue and triple tongue at this speed. So why did he have me do this? You know, I don't remember word for word what he said because this was years ago. But he said that those who believe that there's this gray area like we talked about where double tonguing and singer tonguing is, they're both weird. It's because those people have truly not mastered double or single tonguing. They have to hide behind speed in order to produce double and single tonguing because they can only do it fast for it to sound kind of good. If they slow it down, their flaws are revealed. Their sloppiness and technique is revealed. So they have to hide behind this high speed in order to double or triple tongue. So if that's you, that means you truly haven't mastered it yet. And it makes a lot of sense. There's this weird belief that there's a single tonguing tempo, a double tonguing tempo, and then there's this gray area in the middle where both of them are hard, but no, you should be able to multiple tongue at any speed at all speeds in the spectrum. So that's why he turned the metronome all the way down to 40 beats per 16th note. He wanted me to multiple tongue at that speed and make sure that each articulation was absolutely perfect. And I was told to practice, you know, just the first page of the Arvin book, the double tonguing page. And I was told to practice 40 beats per minute per 16th note. And I would practice that every single day until I got that absolutely perfect. And once I got that perfect, 
I was allowed to speed the metronome up one click. Just one click. And then I had to master it at 41 beats per 16th note every day until I got that perfect. And repeat, and I had to keep going until I eventually got up to actual, like, normal double, triple tonguing speed. I know it sounds like an excruciatingly painful way to practice, like super, super boring, super, super slow practice, but this was the way to do it. And I'm even still working on it to this day because the super slow multiple tonguing practice is actually how you truly refine your double tonguing skills. It takes a lot of discipline to practice this way. It takes a lot of patience to practice this way, but the end result will be worth it. So the aim of this is to practice super duper slowly so you master the two and the ku articulation, two ku, two ku, and you want those both to sound identical. You want your twos to sound exactly like your ku's. So I highly recommend recording and listening back to make sure that both match completely. Now let's demonstrate. I'm gonna play for you a little pattern and I want you to tell me in the comments what you thought the pattern was. Was it two ku, two ku? Was it ku, two, two ku? And etc. So I'm going to demonstrate just a little pattern for you. Could you tell what pattern it was? Let me know in the comments. And once you do that, it was two ku, two ku, two ku. All right, let's try again. Another pattern. What about this time? What was the pattern? Well, it was all single tongues. It was two, 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 two. And however many I did, it was all single tongues. One more time. What about this time? Did you tell what it was? What was the pattern? Well, this one was all K tongues except for the last one. So do you get the point that I'm trying to make here? Your twos and your cues are supposed to sound identical. No one should be able to tell the difference, and that's how you know that you've truly mastered double tonguing, and triple tonguing too, if your twos and your coos sound identical. So this is the best way, hands down, to practice double and triple tonguing. And honestly, even single tonguing, this is a great way to practice getting that clarity, getting that control, getting that consistency between your twos and your coos. Slow, disciplined practice is the way to do it. And while you're doing this, you need to make sure that your air and everything else remains constant. The only thing that truly changes is the tongue in your articulation. The air is just a constant stream of gas that just keeps everything going, and the only thing that changes is the tongue. Just imagine a garden hose. I know you've heard this analogy. No matter what you do, the water is just gonna keep coming out at the same rate. And all you're doing with your articulation is just tapping the water stream with your finger. You might hear some people say that you need more air to do double and triple tonguing, and I believe that is absolutely not true. But what I will say is that when you do something difficult in your trumpet playing, such as double and triple tonguing, your natural tendency is to blow harder and use more air. And that is just an urge that you need to resist. So once again, the key to practicing double and triple tonguing is extremely slow practice. And once you can play it perfectly and with maximum clarity at an extremely slow tempo, you can crank the metronome up one click at a time. You gotta have discipline, just one click at a time and master it at the new tempo. And once again, one click at a time. Don't be like this. Oh, that sounded good. It takes patience, it takes discipline, but just 10 minutes of very focused, detailed practice can go a long way. Think of the long-term effects. And also don't forget about the tone. The tone is the most important thing ever. And that's one of the reasons why we practice slowly is because we really need to focus on the tone and make sure that no matter what we're doing with our articulation, the tone stays good. Way too many people sacrifice tone for speed and that the double tongue doesn't sound good. And you can double tongue at the rate of a machine gun, but if you don't play with a good sound, it really doesn't matter. So what should you practice? I just recommend sticking with the Arbin book, just the double and triple tonguing is in the Arbin book. I think it just goes up and down in F scale at first, and then it gets more complicated. And just stick with that first page or two of exercises, practicing at extremely slow tempos. And once you get those first two pages down, you can continue on, but just one exercise at a time. Don't go too fast. Don't jump too far too quickly. Another book that I highly recommend is the Gecker Articulation Studies. And as the name suggests, this book focuses solely on articulation. There's also another trumpet book that some loser made, but you can check that out too if you want. All right, that's gonna be it for this video. Really hope you enjoyed. As promised, here's a joke that's so terrible 
It's guaranteed to make you laugh. What's green and has wheels? Grass. I lied about the wheels. Alright, that's gonna be it for this video. If you haven't already, make sure that you give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe to the channel with notifications on, and if you want to take your trumpet playing even further, I have a free trumpet sound guide. There's a link in the description. It's absolutely free, so do it because it's free. You've got nothing to lose. Now check out this next video that's all about trumpet fingerings and the harmonic series explained. Alright, see you in the next video.